What's going on everybody? It's Jeremy back again with another exploration. So today we're about to explore this amazing time capsule that was once owned by a school teacher where her and her husband lived for many years. I cannot wait to show you guys what all I found inside of this place. So without further ado, let's get into the story of why it's abandoned. In a small southern town where the hands of the clock seem to move a bit slower, there's a forgotten home standing silently along a windy back road. A place now forsaken by time, yet forever etched in the memories of those who know it. Welcome to the home of Alice and Raymond. The story begins with Raymond, a hard-working tobacco farmer who purchased 30 acres of land back in 1955. And he built this home on his new farm for him and his wife, Alice, an intelligent, ambitious woman who became a teacher at just the age of 16. Alice gave birth to a daughter, Edith, but due to complications, Edith would be the one and only child they would ever have. Over the years, Raymond expanded his tobacco empire, buying acre after acre of the rich southern soil. But fate, as it often does, had a different plan for Raymond. In 1984, he was diagnosed with an aggressive form of lung cancer. He passed away within that same year. His death was a seismic shift for Alice's life. But amidst the quiet that followed his funeral, Alice felt a calling inside of her, fortified by a promise she had made to Raymond before he died, to live her life to the fullest, even if he couldn't be there to share it with her. And so Alice redirected her grief into action. With the proceeds of the sale of the farm, she collaborated with her local Baptist church to establish a health clinic in her town. Knowing the value of education, she started a scholarship fund for local high school graduates. But in the winter of 2016, Alice, now 78 years old, took her last breath in her home, surrounded by the family she created, the friends she made, and the community she embraced. At her funeral, there were more smiles than tears, for Alice had kept her promise to Raymond. She lived a life to the fullest. As for their house, it's a mystery of why it remains untouched. Abandoned, yes, but only in the physical sense. In every creaking floorboard, Alice and Raymond are still very much alive. So come with me as we explore this place and peel back more of the layers of who Alice and Raymond truly were. Good morning, everybody. It's about 8.30 a.m. I actually just camped out right behind this house in the woods. Got my trusty steed here that I've been taking all across the U.S. and I've been having a freaking blast. Anyway, I wanna show you guys the outside of this house. And just a quick stroll through these woods and we're in the front yard. How cool is that? Look at her, she is a beauty. You can tell no one's been maintaining the yard. It's pretty overgrown. This little white fence here has got quite a bit of decay growing on it as well. Front porch, all overgrown. Yeah, this house has definitely seen better days. But this porch would clean up pretty easily. And I love these black rocking chairs. And what's really cool is the sun sets that way. So you can sit on your porch and watch the sunset in the evening. It looks like someone ripped the screens off the window, maybe to break in. What's amazing about abandoned places is nature takes no time at all to start setting up shop. And they're all eyeballing me like a snack, protecting their home. I'm gonna take a look around back, see what it looks like. 
And by the way, it is heating up fast out here and it's getting really humid. So I'm, I'm about to be drenched in sweat. Oh, and check this out. A whole back patio area here behind the screen. And a pretty large carport back here too. With all these vines growing all around it. Oh man, someone broke this door. I don't think that was nature that did that. Yeah, it looks like there was probably glass behind this door that someone busted through to loot the place. And they boarded it up once upon a time. There's the nails they used to do it. There's quite a bit of stuff that used to be inside. Why did they have four coffee makers? Either they like to collect a lot of appliances or they really liked coffee. And check this out, another door that's been boarded from being broken into. And I wonder what's under this sheet here. Yeah, lawn furniture. What a nice little patio area though. And look at all this seating. So much room for activities out here. And a really cool chandelier. Kind of funky. And it looks like back here, there's a whole other area, maybe where their daughter used to play. And look at this, a beautiful little playground area where a swing set used to be. And by the way, it was storming all night last night. So it's gonna be a hot, humid day today. Hopefully it'll be a little cooler inside. So I think we should just go on ahead and get in there and see what it looks like. Stepping into the house, a wave of emotions washes over me as I'm being catapulted back to the last day. Someone called this place home. The atmosphere in the room is thick with memories that feel as real as the furniture that stands watching over this room like silent guardians. It's immediately apparent to me that I've stumbled upon a true time capsule. Stepping into the back door of this place, it looks like we're greeted with some type of living room or a den area, judging by the fireplace here. And it looks like over in the corner is where a TV used to live. Either that was looted or the family came and got it after she passed away. And I love the soft glow of the sun coming in through these shades. And it looks like this is gonna be quite a big house. Looks like the house kind of branches off in a bunch of different directions. And let's check out this fireplace. So it wasn't converted to a gas fireplace at all. She burned real firewood in there. And I feel like I need to clear something up real quick. I get the comment all the time, people asking, how is the house abandoned if there's plants growing inside? Well, these are fake plants. And check out how this mirror has like all this um, mildew residue growing on it. I don't know if you can really see it that well from the, from the camera, but there's definitely moisture and humidity in this house. Check out our books. Old MacDonald had a farm. Popular stories for girls. And look at this. Charleston ghosts. It's always interesting to find books about ghosts at a house of someone who's passed away. And yeah, here's where the TV was. It looks like a very modern TV. Look, we got Amazon, YouTube, Netflix. So it's definitely a newer television that used to sit here. And I can imagine that Alice used to sit right here on this couch and watch TV every day. We got some family photos here, some very old photos.
perhaps this was a sister of hers. Maybe this was Alice when she was a baby. And here's something you don't see every day. A landline phone. Ooh, and I love this lamp. It's a really cool looking lamp. A bird lamp. I can already tell that a lot of the antiques that we're gonna see in here are probably very high quality. And check out where this artwork used to be. It looks like the wall is rotting from the inside out. So there's already a bit of decay that's happening in this house. And once it starts, it grows exponentially. One thing that I'm noticing already is that there's a lot of seating areas in the house. We got some right here, like a little tea table. Another one over there, here as well. There's a chair back there. And it looks like over here is the dining room with a very humble dining room table. It looks like a farm style dining room table. And look at this uh, the chandelier that hangs over it. Definitely farm vibes in here. And check out where this door's been busted out. So it looks like looters already found this place once upon a time. And look at this, a house blessing. We got a laundry room back here. And a deep freezer. Please, no dead bodies today. Nice. I'm pretty amazed at how much is left behind. You would think that the family would want some of this stuff or perhaps like sell some of it off to uh, pay for some funeral costs or whatever. But it looks like everything is left behind, except for the TV and the refrigerator. But I bet all these drawers are full. And check it out, we found the junk drawer. Everybody's got a junk drawer. And I bet the cabinets are completely full. Oh my God. Like, nothing has been taken at all. And look at this, probably a bunch of cookbooks. I bet Alice could cook up a storm. And look, she had recipes written down. See what's down here. <laughs> yeah, the cabinets are completely full. Like I said, I'm kind of surprised that all this stuff is still left behind. Here's all the utensils here. And an old General Electric oven. And look, a lot of her preserves are still in here too. And this place, it almost looks like someone could just walk in the door and just continue their life here. So you can definitely tell that she spent a lot of time in this room and she probably really enjoyed making meals for her friends and her family. The kitchen appliances, worn from years of use, bring to mind the countless meals Alice lovingly prepared here and the small wooden table overlooking the room. It's easy to imagine Alice sitting here in the early morning light, 
perhaps reading a book or jotting down lesson plans for her students. A pot of coffee, the newspaper unfolded. Perhaps Raymond's presence felt across the table. These small cherished moments and rituals made this kitchen the heartbeat of the home. Check this out. This door has been busted in too. So it looks like the house has been broken in multiple times. Oh, wow. This is her vanity. This is where she sat to fix her hair, do her makeup, get ready to go down to town or when she had a guest over. This is absolutely precious. And look at this, there she is. Education Association extends Alice. Upon retirement, recognition and gratitude for faithful services as a member of the instructional staff of, and I can't say the school because I don't want to give this location away, but it's her certificate for retirement basically from being a school teacher. Yeah, it's all hair stuff, makeup. Oh, interesting. And some shotgun shells. Dang, Alice. Oh, that's a cool looking brush. Ah, and look at this. We got some liquor here. <laughs> we got some vodka. Isn't that funny how like the older generation like this used to hide their liquor? And then behind us here, we have a wardrobe with all of our towels and wash rags. Well, let's see what's in this can. Looks like a collection of different tools and knickknacks. I thought there was gonna be a gun in there at first. That's definitely happened to me before. And this must be Alice's personal bathroom. Her toothbrush still in the cup. And there's so much of this house that just looks not abandoned. Oh, check this out. She has tons of soap here. Looks like stuff she probably got from various hotel rooms, maybe hospital rooms over the years. We have a bunch of linens here. Pretty typical bathroom. generations not only the value of knowledge giving to others but most importantly the meaning of love and just like the piece of art alice's impact is now stitched into the fabric of this town and this right here is her bedroom the walls that witnessed decades of laughter, tears, and whispered late night conversations became the backdrop to her life's finale as Alice chose to take her last breath in this very room of the house. I can imagine the room filled with quiet whispers, the air heavy but somehow comforting as if Raymond himself were present, welcoming Alice to the next chapter. I hope she was getting assistance. Her bedpan's still here by the door. It's a pretty large room. And this dresser is absolutely incredible. This is 
a remarkable dresser. And it's an entire bedroom set. There's a wardrobe over here. I love this like curtain on the back of it. It's really cool. And this is completely full. Look, it's got her, looks like a Christmas sweater. Some Christmas paper, some ribbon to wrap them. More winter clothes down here. The Book of Common Prayer. That's what that says. And look, lots of Christmas cards and envelopes to give to her loved ones. Let's see about this one. <laughs> Yeah, same thing here, guys. I imagine all of this stuff is sitting here just how it was since the day that she passed away. Got some random knickknacks, some sewing supplies, a couple of her purses. No, these are, uh, Makeup mirrors, that's cool. This is like a museum. Just taking a glimpse into the life of the sweet lady who used to live here. And look at this, all of her perfume is still here. And some over here as well. It's all completely set up how it was right before she passed away. Like no one's been in here and touched that stuff. Leather jacket here, some raincoats. The other closet looks like there's quite a bit in it too. Check it out. A lot of her shoes still in here, just left behind. And you can see how mold right here is growing on these shoes. These are actually black, but it has like this glaze of mold. Looks like frosting. And look at this, purses of hers still left behind. This is wild. Like I said, it, it just feels like we're going through a museum of someone's life. And this is one of her nightstands here. A book next to the bed. And this drawer's stuck. I don't wanna pull it. Like I said, the house is very humid in here. So a lot of these wooden drawers are, are warped and they won't open anymore. We got a bunch of sewing supplies here. So Alice definitely liked to sew. A lot of different cloths and materials for sewing. And more down here as well. And check it out, we got another landline here and a phone book. Man, remember those? You got some cough medicine, some big staple rub, some lotion. Looks like just general care that she would need right next to the bed, some toilet paper. All right, I say we keep venturing on into the rest of the house. 
Guys, I just peeked around the corner and this next room is incredible. Get ready for this. This is one hell of a dining room. Suddenly the atmosphere shifts dramatically. The elegance and brightness of this room, a stark contrast to the areas we've just left behind. This dining room feels absolutely frozen in time. Everything is in its right place, like it's waiting on a last gathering over a hot meal. From the long wilted flowers likely handpicked by Alice herself, to the china cabinet perfectly staged with fine glassware and relics, and the wooden table tells its own story. You can almost hear the laughter and conversation and feel the memories that still permeate this beautiful room. In my eyes, this room serves as a quiet tribute to Alice's extraordinary gift of making a house truly feel like a home. It looks like we've now entered into a completely different house. And there's not much dust on the table. Look how preserved it is. And it's all perfectly set up for guests. <sighs> Again, like I said, drawers are, drawers are stuck. We have linens, look at this, for all the silverware. Incredible. All these dining room supplies. More table linens, napkins, and this needs a skeleton key to open the door. What a beautiful mirror this is. I cannot believe all this stuff is just sitting in this room completely left behind. So amazing. And look at this cabinet. All of the china and cups are still in here. It's so clean, but I don't have the key to open it. Maybe it's up here? No. I cannot believe the time capsule that we just found and this beautiful crystal chandelier up top. This is wild. And the silk curtains. Yeah, everything's just in its right place. This place looks completely untouched. You can see a bit of mildew growing on the chair here. All that frosting is mildew growing from the humidity in this house. So needless to say, it doesn't smell that good in here, but it looks so good. And this right here, is the front door of the house. What a beautiful foyer. Small crystal chandelier when you first walk in. And it looks like right next to the door here, this could possibly be a chair with a family crest on it. Right here, there's some spider webs that have set up shop. And this right here is black mold all on the wall and door paneling. And here, right in the entranceway, childhood photographs of both Raymond and Alice are prominently displayed on the wall. It's Raymond when he was a little boy. And this was Alice when she was about the same age. Staring at the photos, I wonder what they could have been like at this age. Raymond's youthful eyes have an intensity about them. I imagine him working alongside his father in the family garden, already learning the rhythms of the earth and the meaning of a hard day's work. This grounding presence perfectly complementing Alice's uplifting spirit. And here's another one of those chairs with the possible family crest on it. 
This is a very high quality, very old chair. Blows my mind that stuff like this is still left behind. And this huge mirror, guys, look at this. This is wild. And I imagine, and I could be wrong about this, and if I am, please let me know. These hooks right here were for hanging hats. And this is where you put your cane and umbrella here. It kind of rested up against that arm. This is high quality stuff, guys. I mean, this is straight up marble. Ugh. It's an empty drawer. Another fake plant, of course. It's amazing. What era do you think this thing is from? Let me know in the comments below. Very art deco, in my opinion. And then right here is a very fancy living room. The air in here is a peculiar blend of lightness and an inexplicable melancholy. It's as though the room itself is suspended between two worlds, the joyous past and the somber present. Every piece of furniture, every object seems lovingly curated by Alice. It's like a still life painting of her very essence. She clearly had an eye for detail and perhaps an ear for melody. Speaking of which, the piano. Such a fine piece of craftsmanship. I wonder the melodies it's sung over the years. What a beautiful piece this is. It's very out of tune. This thing is beautiful. Look at the design in the wood. I've only seen maybe one or two of this type of piano in abandoned houses. These things are very, very rare. Oh, and look at this lamp. I mean, high quality stuff in here. And look at this. I imagine maybe one of those is her daughter. Wow. I am blown away by this place. And look at this. A whole collection of knickknacks, some dolls, books, and look, we even have an arrowhead. Maybe Alice or Raymond found it. This is incredible. I know I keep saying it, but it, it feels like we're in a museum right now. I love this little table that pops up. By the way, what do you call this type of cabinet with the table that pulls out, perhaps maybe for reading books or opening envelopes. Let me know in the comments below. And yeah, look, there's a bunch of envelopes here, a stapler, some documents that I don't wanna show on YouTube. This wardrobe is so nice. And look, I even found the, the key that goes to it. It looks like a bunch of old letters throughout the years, tax documents, bank documents. What do you even call this type of wood? Is this bird's eye maple? Maybe a uh, mahogany there? Let me know in the comments below. And it almost perfectly matches the piano. I love this rocking chair with the flower embroidery. It makes me wonder if Alice upholstered this. And another bride in a wedding dress. It's a beautiful woman in that photo. And here's a matching lamp that goes to the one on the piano. Yeah, it seems like Alice had very refined 
elegant taste. Check out this artwork that's on the wall here. It's a scene of gestures and musicians entertaining a group of wealthy people. I love this like Victorian sofa that's here. So pretty. Look at the woodwork in it. This is super high quality stuff. Little knick-knack boxes. Some tweezers, stuff for trimming your nails, filing. This is amazing, guys. I mean, this house keeps getting better and better the further we go into it. And now this room feels heavy with both absence and presence, as though it's waiting to be a part of new stories while cherishing the old ones deep within its walls. By the way, it's like 95 degrees Fahrenheit in this house and I am dripping in sweat. Bear with me, guys. This is a hot exploration. Whew, steamy in here. Check it out, we have another big mirror. Sort of in the same style as the other one that we saw in the foyer of the house. And look at these vases, really beautiful. And a little area of the house kind of dedicated to herself really. This right here is Alice. She even had a light that illuminated her portrait. And this right here is a plaque dedicated to her service as a teacher for all the years that she did. Her face in this portrait, once full of childlike joy, now has a stoic expression of wisdom and accomplishment, despite the hardships she endured through trials and great loss. And what a beautiful little bathroom. Again, more soap, more shampoo. Completely filled to the brim. It looks like this was perhaps a gift at one point. Maybe someone gave that to her. And look at all the spider webs in here. I don't know if you guys can see this, but there are webs everywhere, all on the floor. Spiders have definitely claimed this house as their own. I love this wallpaper. There's always a time in my videos that I say that sentence. Man, I can't believe how much stuff is just still left behind. I mean, this whole house is completely stocked. I don't want to disturb Mr. Spider here. Man, this Alice had some really cool furniture. So cool. It's, it's like Chinese style furniture here. This door stuck. Got a storage closet with a very old style vacuum cleaner down here. And I would go through a lot of this stuff, but guys, it is so hot in this house. I feel like I'm in a sauna right now. And we have yet another immaculate room. It feels like we're now crossing the threshold into another chapter of this house's life story. This must have been Edith's childhood bedroom. Her portrait hanging on the wall as if she's watching over the room. A silent testimony to the young life that once danced through this home. The single beds and matching furnishings suggest this room was later transformed into a guest bedroom, perhaps for the grandchildren. Imagine it, Alice no longer the young mother, but now the grandma, folding back the blankets and tucking in the little ones. The same hands that once nurtured her own daughter, now extending that same cycle of love and care to Edith's children. A 
little vanity here. The furniture in here is in such great condition, with the exception of just a little bit of mildew spots. I love this little bench too that matches the floral design. Oh, and check it out. This dresser here also has the floral design. It's a whole matching set. A whole photo album. A bunch of family photos. Yeah, a bunch of old family photos of Alice's. Again, I just don't understand why the family wouldn't take this. So this whole um, upper half of this drawer is old documents and family photos. And look, more mildew spots. It's all family photos. Yeah, it just doesn't make any sense of why that stuff would be left behind like that. Check out how the beds match the rest of the furniture in here, including the nightstand over here. What a neat little bedroom set. And this was their daughter. What a beautiful piece. <laughs> that drawer's stuck. Guess we'll never know what's in there. Yeah, I don't wanna break this stuff trying to open it, so I'm trying to be as gentle as possible. I love this little room. Like some pretty old dresses in here. Stuff from maybe the 1960s or 70s. I mean, look at this. It's wild that this stuff is just still in here like this. And a bunch of old books. Probably used to be sitting on a bookshelf somewhere in the house at one point. And I always like to leave a house as similar to the way I found it. So when I open a drawer, I like to shut it back, open a closet door, put it back. I don't want to disturb anything. Sort of like when you're in a museum. And more wedding photos here. And this has got to be Alice. I feel like Alice was definitely a woman of tradition. There's so many bride portraits in this house. And here we have another guest bedroom, looks like. Man, Alice kept a clean house. I mean, all the drawers in this house are completely full of linens, cloths, towels, bed sheets. I love this little book holder with her little knick knacks on it. And a beautiful bed. Look at this, guys. Very solid bed frame and a dresser to go along with it. And some more Chinese style artwork on these vases. Ooh, I wonder what's in here. Well, would you look at that? It's like a little travel kit. Maybe perhaps this was 
Raymond's at one point before he passed away, which is really sad if that's the case. She might have kept it just for sentimental value. This drawer is completely full of stuff. What is in here? Looks like some credit cards in there. Don't want to show those. I'm trying to keep all the identities a secret. And just so many knickknacks in these drawers. Notice almost every drawer in this house is completely stuffed to the brim. Some winter boots here. Ah, and here is the TV box. This is the TV that used to be in here. Check it out, and it's got the Amazon, YouTube, Voodoo, all that stuff logos on it. Huh. Interesting how that's gone, and a lot of the sentimental stuff in this house is not. Once again, another incredible room, and this house just keeps going. And we still have another floor to go up on. But I didn't check out this section over here of the house. It's a very old table. I want to check out this sled. That's cool. All of Alice's winter coats. She probably used the most frequently. Ooh, we got a briefcase. We gotta see what's inside the briefcase. Oh yeah, this is, a lot of this is like tax documents. Stuff that'll definitely give her identity away. So I don't want to show that, but it looks like a lot of important papers. Put that back where I found it. I imagine this door goes right out to the front. It's crazy how this house is like two worlds. Isn't it wild how light and airy the front of the house is compared to the back where it's just so dark and moody? Oh, we have a little bathroom here under the stairs. And I love this hanging lamp here instead of a light fixture. That's pretty cool. Oh, and we didn't look in this cabinet here either when we first walked in the door. Let's see what's in here. Dang, Alice is a little pack rabbit. Some extra blankets, table mats, all sorts of stuff that she probably didn't use. All right, guys, we're about to go upstairs and I gotta say it's probably 110 degrees up there. It is ridiculously hot. So again, bear with me. Oh man, here we go. Very solid stairs. Oh, and I can feel the heat wave. All right, we can do this. Oof, it is hot up here. Let's see what's in this drawer here. It's a really neat looking leather wallet. Ha, huh, and check this out. It's Raymond's driver's license. This, guys, this was his wallet. Wow. And I imagine Alice probably put it up here sometime after he passed away just to kind of get it out of sight. But she didn't want to let it go. Alice, you loved him, didn't you? And 
an old prescription bottle with Raymond's name on it from 1975. Yeah, it looks like Alice was hanging on to things from the past. Didn't want to let it go. Man, all these drawers are full of stuff. I mean, it goes all the way back. And check this out. I imagine this toy horse was in the family for a long time. Wow, this house is surprisingly very big. And look at all this debris the decay that's on the floor that's falling in from up above. I imagine this hole upstairs was used for more guests. I mean, she could accommodate 10 or 15 people with all the space that she has in this house. And everything's set up, staged really well and welcoming. And this is neat. This house is in immaculate shape. It's not often that I use the term time capsule, but this one absolutely is. Oh, we have a, a treasure chest. No way. Wedding dress, what? Guys. This could have very well been Alice's wedding dress. And look, this box says wedding veil. Again, how's this stuff just left behind? This is like a museum. Just going through the history of Alice's life. And look. We have Alice and Raymond here with their daughter. It's clear to me that the happiness on display isn't just a pose. It's a sincere snapshot of the joy they had together. And Alice, as a young bride in the other photo, she seemed so graceful, wearing the gown that represented the beginning of the life she would spend with Raymond and the dreams she would realize through their bond I feel like this house was full of a lot of love. Some more family photos down there. We have a, an attic space, or a treasure trove, if you will. Oh, it's so hot in here, guys. I'm gonna pound a whole gallon of water after this exploration. Wonder who this guy was. Maybe Alice's dad, maybe Raymond's dad. This is cool. Williamsburg, Virginia. I've been there. And for the sake and the spirit of exploring, we're gonna keep going further back into this attic. What an amazing lampshade that used to be. It's a lot of very old furniture back here. I mean, it still keeps going further and further back. Oh, it's so incredibly hot up here, guys. Check out this old train. It's a metal train. For any of you collectors out there that know anything about this, let me know what we're looking at in the comments below. I imagine this thing's worth quite a few pennies. I have to get out of this section of the attic. Oh my God, guys. Look how much I'm dripping in sweat. Pretty large bathroom up here with a double vanity. And 
mean, what an accommodating house. And of course we got a throne. Gotta have at least one of those in a bathroom. Yeah, plenty of linens, plenty of towels, wash rags, whatever you need if you're staying here. I set up like a hotel up in here. We have made it through yet another amazing, hot abandoned exploration. And I just wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. You have no idea how much your support means to me. If you guys enjoyed this exploration, let me know in the comments below. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, and until next time, stay off the beaten path.